Hey guys and welcome back to another Dark Souls 3 video here on the channel. So today we are going to be doing part 3 of our 100% walkthrough where we pick up every single item in the game and discover all the secrets. So today we're going to be doing area number 3 which is the Undead Settlement. So uh, let's get straight onto it with the soul over here to the left, hard to miss. And uh, now we're just going to take the only path we can which is down these long set of stairs. Uh, before we head into that gate, uh, clear all the enemies out over here and we're going to head down... Uh, to the left uh, behind this carriage there's going to be two dogs guarding uh, these Aloran skulls and over here where there's all these um, dead guys well at least we assume they're all dead anyway uh, there's going to be some homeward bones so uh, if we look very carefully over here to the right or get close somebody will start talking to us and if you look carefully you can uh, tell one of them's kind of moving or breathing uh, so go ahead and talk to him and um, he will go back as an NPC to Farling Shrine, which is kind of cool. I like how they tried to kind of hide that NPC. That was really well done. Anyway, now I've done that, we're going to head to the main gate um, and head to the bonfire over here if we want it. And um, yeah, so it's not really anywhere we can go here, just to the left to keep on the path. No secrets around here. Uh, in this building to the right, there's going to be an item hanging on this corpse over here, which is a small le leather shield. And uh, we're just going to continue down here. There's nothing on the top floor. On the center floor, there's going to be another body hanging outside. Uh, we have to cut it off and we'll be picking that up just in a second when we get down there. And all the way at the back of the balcony, there's going to be some repair powder. Uh, now we'll head back in, in the building and there's going to be uh, some charcoal pine resin just there. And uh, there's going to be like three enemies will ambush you here, so just be careful. And there's going to be um, some more charcoal in the corner. Right, so heading out of this building, we're going to come to uh, the center of the map where there's this big ritual going on and there's loads of witches. Uh, so just be careful of that. As we pick up Loretta's bone, uh, we'll be talking about that right at the end of the video. So if you're wondering what that does, uh, there's an Estus shard just there which comes in handy. And over here to the left by this gate, there's going to be another little so. Uh, well, there's another item in clear sight behind the tree which is an ember and down here... Uh, there's a door to the left that we could go in, but we're going to be taking a different way around and we're going to be coming out of that door. There's tight night shards just there. So we're going to come in here and take these two guys out and hop down. So before heading straight on, we're going to turn back and we're going to find a door that we can't open from this side. So just ignore that for now and head up the stairs. One of these three or four bodies has got an item on it, so make sure you don't miss that. And uh, over here there's going to be... Uh, some more charcoal guarded by a skeleton cage guy. Anyway, uh, this is the door I was talking about before, so we can come out of there and we're back at the ritual place. But uh, for now, we're going to come back in there and we're going to look for a hole in the ground over here to the right and drop down. So there's going to be a sunlight medal here, or sorry, warrior of sunlight. It's not a sunlight medal, my bad. And this is going to allow us to uh, equip it and enter the sun covenant. Also, uh, there was a pot of Estus there that allowed us to re recharge our Estus, so that's kind of cool I guess. Anyway, uh, we're going to head back through the long passageway and come out the other side. Over here to the right we can break all this uh, wood and all the way down here there is going to be another little cell. Um, so getting back on path, we're going to continue down the hill until we get to a building on our left I believe. Yeah. So in this building there's going to be the whip and come back outside and then we're going to go to the right again and look for this slightly hidden passage down here just for a tight night shard. Uh, once we've done that we're going to get back on path and continue down the hill until we get to uh, an area where we could go left, right or centre. First we're going to go to the left and climb up the ladder and there's going to be one item up here. This is where the fat guy is, the fat witch, so make sure you be careful with him. Uh, pick up the tight night shard and head back down. So now we could head down the building or go to the right. They both take take us to the same place, but uh, down center has no items. And over here, Dars has head one. So we're going to go this way, jump across, and get these two rusted coins. And... Um, that's pretty much for this bit. Uh, we can we can jump down or go down the path over here. That building just there is the building I was talking about if we took the straight path. So yeah, it comes to the same place and uh, we're going to come to this bonfire. So uh, before continuing this way towards the boss, we're actually going to go all the way back to 
where the rich was going on and this time we're going to go to the right and take the wooden bridge uh, just to show you the other path that we can take to get to the same bonfire so before heading in the building we're going to go over here to the right and stick to the left coming up the hill before heading up the ladder we can come around here to the right uh, get the plank shield and there's going to be this NPC which I talked about in the in the um, mound makers covenant uh, which kind of gives you a clue he kind of mentions something about getting in a cage uh, which we'll be showing that in a second uh, coming over here on the roof there's going to be the, uh, an item on this big roof which are six fire bombs so yeah so now we're going to head back until we get to the ladder Cl go ahead and climb up the ladder and get onto the next set of uh, roofs it's going to be one item over here uh, above the window which is some homeward bones and now we're just going to head off the end here to this grassy area with a unique new enemy in it so he won't actually attack you unless you attack him so just ignore him for now uh, spam X or it will fall down but even if it does fall down you will be able to get it so don't worry if it does uh, here what you want to do is get behind him and uh, press X to get in his cage and this is what the other NPC was talking about so this guy will take us to the area which is below the boss battle you have to do this, you can only do this before killing the boss, so yeah. Uh, this guy is the leader of the Mound Maker Covenant, so he will allow you to become part of the Covenant. There's also a wooden shield there. He gives you a Homeward Bone. Um, this is the altar that you have to leave. The rewards you get for invading people as purple NPC. And yeah, the only option we've got is to Homeward Bone out of there. So yeah, anyway, going back to the wooden bridge, we're going to have to come through the stables this time, which is to the left of the hill. So come through here, pick the item up that was to the left, uh, once you get outside there's going to be an item up the hill to the here which is a round shield and now we just have to head across the bridge. Uh, just here there's going to be a load of um, explosive barrels with people firing fire bombs at you from above so be careful. There's a soul on here and behind it if we go all the way to the end we are going to be able to pick up the fly fire clutch ring. Uh, so nothing around here we have to go down to the left watch out for this big witch here uh, before heading down the second flight of stairs just come over here to the right and um, try and roll off and get to get to this ledge down here it seems kind of dodgy the first time but it's not actually that hard uh, before heading into the right we're going to come all the way to the end and get a tight night shard now we're going to go back and head into the building where we will find our next bonfire so yeah, I didn't rest out just because all the enemies are cleared out. So, uh, coming up onto the roofs, there's nothing around here until we get to uh, this low stairs here. Uh, just go ahead and equip a bow. Make sure you've got a bow or a crossbow. And what we're going to do is we're going to shoot this body down just here. So, uh, if you get unlucky, it will rebound. Or at, le at least I don't think it always does. It may always bounce down. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, you get the part of sand from there. Uh, head all the way back round and continue up uh, the path we left off, uh, kill all the enemies around here. And on this tower there is going to be an NPC, a pyromancer, so uh, just talk to her what's in this cage and she will take. She will go back to Farlink Shrine. Pick this hand axe over here and uh, that's it for this bit. Drop down here if you want, wherever you want, just, just go down. So now we're going to actually continue down the second flight of stairs and uh, on the last building to the left we're going to go all the way around the back of it and this is going to be a little sneaky item down here. Watch out because you will get ambushed. Somebody will climb up so just watch out for that. Anyway, let's continue down the last flight of stairs. Um, this door over here to our left is actually a shortcut that will be activated a bit later on just before the boss. Uh, there's an ember behind this tree, uh, nothing else around here to worry about, so now continue down the road. Uh, there's going to be a part where you can go left across a bridge or down to the right in like a little cave. So first we're going to come to the left across the bridge, climb up these stairs here, and there's going to be another soul. And all the way around the back of this building, there's going to be another item guarded by two dogs. So uh, once we've got that, come all the way back to the main path. Continue up to the big door of the chapel, altar, church, whatever you want to call it, until we get to this lift. So uh, just take the lift down first and stay on the path. It's not You can't really get lost down here. There's just one path all the way until we get to a room with uh, an ember in it. And 
another unique enemy. So uh, this guy's not too hard. It's kind of like a little version of the boss um, that we fought in the last area. So once we killed him, he, we get his sword. It's a unique sword or whatever. And uh, coming out this door, is going to go to the next area, which is Road of Sacrifices. But that's going to be next episode. So uh, we're going to walk away from here and walk all the way back to the lift. You can homeward bone. It's the same thing, I guess. Uh, but anyway, now we're going to hit hit the lift and uh, roll straight away to not go down with it and wait until we get the top part of the lift so press that again and now we're gonna go all the way to the top and uh, continue up the stairs which are, which are behind us to get to the top of the tower and uh, there's gonna be a pretty familiar giant here so we're gonna talk to him and become his friend uh, the reason for this is um, I'll explain it a bit later on, but if you went straight to the boss without doing this, you may encounter uh, some difficulties, let's just say, but I'll, I'll let you know what it is once we get there. So on the way down, as soon as you hear the hmm, try and roll onto this uh, platform of wood here, and uh, let's just continue straight forwards. So uh, here's Sigma of, um, Sigma, sorry, of Katarina. He will ask for some help to kill this uh, fiery demon down here. So uh, just head down, uh, first we're going to do the battle, we're not going to pick any items up, just go and battle this guy and um, as soon as you initiate, um, Siegmeier will, will come down and help you. So uh, just don't leave him alone because if you let him fight alone he will end up dying and you won't be able to do any more of his side quests, so make sure that doesn't happen. So when you kill him you get a fire gem and uh, also you can speak to Siegmeier and get uh, some... some a drink or something, I can't remember what it's called, and also you get two two gestures, which are toast and sleep, I believe. So uh, now we'll get into the item part of this area, so we're going to hop off the roof from where we came up the lift. The first items are clearly, in, clearly over here, visible near the ledge, which is going to be a few homeward bones, so there's no items down here to the left, you can either come here left or through the middle, same difference, all the way to the bottom where there's going to be a large club near a tree. The next two items are going to be up on this little roof over here, uh, both knocking bodies down. So that's one of them, which is going to be a pale tongue, tongue, tongue. And uh, over here there's going to be another one, which uh, is the northern set. So uh, head down to the building, which is opposite, and uh, to the left before heading up the stairs there's going to be another item over here. Don't worry about the cages, they're not going to fall on you, at least not yet. It may, f it may seem like it, but not quite yet. Anyway, head up. Um, before heading out here, we're going to go to the right. I'm oh, sorry, to the left. Get these Lawrence goes. Now we're going to go to the right and head across this little walkway. Still nothing out to the left. So the only the only uh, way we've got really is to the right. So head up the stairs. And uh, there's going to be a chest here. So as soon as we open this chest, we're going to get ambushed by four of these uh, cages. Uh, once we've killed him, just pick up the human pine resin and continue climbing the building. Yeah, in this next room, there's nothing, so now we're going to head outside to the last floor, head up the little uh, wooden stairs, go all the way to the top, and pick up Flynn's ring. So there's still one more little secret we can get around here, so we're going to come to the back part of the building and uh, hop down to this wooden part, and then we're going to jump onto the tower. So there's three items in this tower. One of them is uh, going all the way around the back of it. All the way round. It's probably quicker to go around, around the other way, but whatever. Pick up the homeward bones and the other two items are all the way at the bottom. So uh, what you want to do is try and jump onto this wooden ledge which is halfway down and then just let yourself drop down. So both, uh, both items down here are pretty interesting. We've got the client three ring and the mirror set, which is really, really cool to know. Um, and that's it, there's nothing behind this tower and now we're just going to go around the tower until we can drop back down and this is going to take us uh, where we'd seen before after the uh, cliff bonfire the, there, we mentioned a shortcut about the boss that and we're going to hop down here so this time we're going to go to the right through the cave I mentioned or sewer system more like I guess uh, there's nothing really down here, but this is going to take us back to the original bonfire we was meant to meet back up at. So there is one item down here, which is Caestus, and to the left there's going to be a closed door. We're going to be talking about that after the boss battle. So if you don't know how to get there, hang around for a bit, and we will be going in there very soon. 
Uh, the big rat does give you, uh, I think it's the poison bite ring or something like that. I can't quite remember. Uh, anyway, so now we're just going to head out this door that we can only, only open from this side. And we are going to be back at the bonfire we ended up at right near the start. So now we've joined both paths up. Now we're going to go and continue forwards towards the boss. So it's straight ahead. No getting lost here. We're going to come to a tree with a lot of arrows in the ground and a whole load of items. So uh, this is what I mentioned. If we didn't be friends with the giant, he would be spamming arrows at his like fucking loads. And uh, it wouldn't really be a nice trip through here, especially getting these kind of items. So this item's really important. This item allows us to upgrade the Estus to plus one if we burn it at the, at the main bonfire. So yeah, so just pick up all these items around the tree and... If, before heading into the building where the boss battle is, uh, just head over here to the left and up these hills. There's going to be two items over here. There's going to be um, the cleric set over there. And around here, there's going to be some ashes. So these ashes are quite important. We'll be talking about them uh, after the boss battle too. And so yeah, so I nearly missed this item under the tree. Luckily, I turned back and and seen I, I missed one. But anyway, not, not nothing that important. So uh, once we're heading into this building, we're going to head up to the top floor and uh, before continuing straight, we're going to head back on ourselves and jump across to the top floor of the building where we can pick up the Great Scythe. And that's it. Uh, get Well, try and jump back to the stairs. Uh, anyway, continue forward is the only way we can uh, through the long passageway towards the boss. So to the left, we've got the boss battle and to the right, we have the door I mentioned before that we can open as a shortcut. So just go ahead and open that before fighting the boss battle. And yeah, uh, there's not really much to say about the boss. I mean, it's quite an easy boss. Just hit him in the eggs. And uh, yeah, pretty simple boss. He really doesn't do that much damage either. So yeah. So um, we will get the transcendent kill, which uh, will allow us to to um, trade boss souls for weapons, so that's very interesting. Obviously this boss is actually completely optional, so that's kind of the point of pit killing the boss, to uh, have the ability to change our boss souls for weapons. But anyway, like I mentioned, there's a few things I want to talk about, so we're going to go back to um, Firelink Shrine, the first thing with the mer merchant, given the ash we just found, and she will now sell us a key, um, I think it's called Grave Key or something like that. So make sure you buy that, we'll be heading back into um, the undead settlement in a second and also um, the bone we found near the start of the level we can give to this guy which that was the guy I was meant to be finding so all he does really is just let us keep the ring which is the blue, t blue tear stone ring which we had anyway so yeah. Anyway, um, with the key we just bought, the grave key, now we can open this door in the rat area. So um, go ahead and open that. A few interesting things down here so uh, first of all to the right we have got um, an item and a statue so this statue what it does is you can request absolution and request dissolution so uh, yeah anyway uh, heading back into the catacombs area kind of place uh, we got an item over there and to the left we um, have another item in the middle of the next room there's nothing really you, can, you can't really get lost around here to be honest so just continue forwards uh, all the way into the end and we're gonna end up uh, at the bottom of the valley, you can see from a lot of the area up above. So yeah, uh, before heading straight, we're going to come over here to the right and pick the two items up over here, which is Titanite Shards, both of them. So um, now just head back and take the other path. Uh, before heading into the door to the left, we're going to get a bow out again and uh, shoot this corpse over here. And we're going to get a shield from that. So uh, now the only path we've got left getting to the end of the video, coming down here to the left, climb down this uh, ladder, be careful because this hole to the left will just like literally spam the rats at you, so uh, you can either stand there or kill him and just, or just get the fuck out of there as soon as possible. Anyway, uh, last NPC over here in this area, um, she will go back to the Firelink Shrine to teach us some miracles. And um, there's going to be one final door over here, which we can only unlock to this from this side. And this is going to take us all the way back to uh, the, the the tower, the Katarina Tower, and all that crap. 
and this NPC will kind of tell us that his, he'll be our friend as long as we protect the NPC we just saved. Whew. So anyway guys, this is the end of episode 3. Uh, this one's kind of a long one, but uh, a very interesting episode and a very interesting area with a load of secrets. I really like doing this one. And yeah guys, uh, so hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you guys didn't miss anything. Um, if this was helpful, please go like and subscribe. Remember you can follow me on Twitter. You can give me direct support on Patreon, which is much appreciated. So yeah, guys, we'll see you next time.